Hey guys, so it's a bit of a rough time for rogue decks right now, uh, unless you're built particularly to combat against tiers, but nonetheless, I did want to bring my tier list by the data video as usual, where I use dueling book data from YG Scope uh, to categorize uh, rogue decks in particular for this video, and you can always check out my uh, original video in terms of how the tier scores are calculated, it's just a very simple formula. And now before we continue, a big thanks to my sponsors as usual, uh, if you want some discounts on Yu-Gi-Oh supplies, feel free to check out the codes in the description below, so let's just get started. So first, to cover which decks will be considered rogue for this video, this was my meta tier list for this month, although keep in mind that this was done just before Magnificent Mavens was legal, so when the Ishizu cards came out. So obviously the format has shifted since then, although tiers, spread, and Flunder are still the three best decks. So for the most part, I'll be covering the decks in the rogue section here and below, as well as some decks that ended up getting categorized as tier 2 in this previous video. Of course, Wideoscope is not perfect and there's a variety of decks that the site still cannot identify, with some of the notable ones being Exosisters, Marincis, Crystal Beast, Labyrinth, and Naturia. Now this is unfortunate since some of these decks definitely have the potential to top at least the regional level, so hopefully the site can identify them one day. Dinomorphia is another deck that cannot be identified because it ends up getting labeled as Dinosaur instead. So starting with A tier, we have Sky Striker, which while it did not get any tops at YCS Dortmund, it's by far the most played rogue deck on Dueling Bug right now, and so that was enough to be scored first, despite having a miserable win percentage at 41%. The new card in Linkage is nice, but the timing is rather unfortunate, because the Bestials, Banishing Ray, or the Medora Kelder Shuffle from the graveyard of their spells really does make it rough for Strikers. Then we have Mystic Mind Burn, which actually did top the recent YCS, and I'm also just going to use this as a representation of stun decks in general, although that may not be entirely correct. A little funny that we're in this position where a lot of players actually cheer on these anti-meta stun decks to win because of the issues in tier format, and this deck actually did well performance-wise online with a 52% match win percentage. Next we have Madolce, which also did very well at the YCS relatively speaking, and this along with the Vernasilf package was built to combat tiers as they can Foolish, Keldo, or Medora for the Grave Shuffle, had a very strong win percentage at 57% as well, and if you're interested in how this deck plays, you can check out my live duel against Ryan Yu that I posted recently. Then to cap off A tier, we do have Heroes, which while it did not top YCS Dortmund or any YCS recently, it actually can do well against tiers if it gets to go first, because Dark Law is too overpowered. It's even gotten to the point where some tier players use Mass Exchange 2 to turbo into Dark Law in mirror matches, and Heroes can of course utilize many other cards like DPE and Dark Angel alongside with it. Then at B tier, we start with Runic, which I assume is more of the Runic burn strategy and was another deck that topped the YCS, although it did not score well on this list because not many players online run this strategy. Another deck with a high win percentage at 59%, the Runic stuff did unfortunately take a big hit with the release of Ishizu cards as they can shuffle back the Runic spells that you can target with Fountain. Definitely had a strong but short run with Runic Sprite as the best deck at one brief point, but that time has passed for now. Next we have Mathmac, which sadly might fall even more after this month. The release of Bistrials already hampered this strategy enough, but now with the Graveyard Shuffle along with it is a bit too much. Was in the tier 1 status for a couple of months in my videos, but sadly it's already back to rogue status for now. Then we have Draco Slayers, which is another deck that actually topped the YCS and is definitely deserving of a higher position than this. Although it looks like it was not played too much online and that's why it scored this low. Has a good tier matchup and I guess it can also play under Barrier Statue since Majesty is a win. You can also check out the Pendulum deck profile on my channel featuring the one and only Triff Gaming. Next we have Tri Brigade, which admittedly is more so Tri Sprite, but I think I can still classify them as Rogue for now. I know King Dark on Dueling Book does really well with the Tri Brigade strategy, and we have been in discussions of doing a deck profile on my channel someday, so stay tuned. And then we have Silent Mangrate, which while it does not get screwed over by the Bestial shuffling back cards like Spinny, Jack Jagger, or Gazelle, would rather get annoying. The deck did not perform well either at 43% win percentage, and it's sad to see a once dominant deck struggle even at a Rogue status now. Next we have Ad Ignister, which similar to Mathmech, saw a decline in play post Darkwing Blast. Special summons are crazy and aims to get a Tower Monster and arrival at Ignister. The deck was still performing well at 57% match win percentage, and Vision on Dueling Book is usually ranked very high with this strategy if you want to watch him play. Moving on to tier C, we have Eldritch. Honestly, as a former Eldritch player, I think this deck is rather unplayable right now because Eldritch strategies usually play two Golden Lords and with most decks main decking Bestials, once those two Lords are gone, which will be very easy to do by the way, this deck's game plan is just straight up over. The mills from the Shizu cards are kinda nice for the Eldritch traps, but just not enough to do well in this format. Next we have Dinosaur, and as mentioned before, these numbers also include Dinomorphia values unfortunately. Actually did pretty well with the 53% match win percentage, but sadly it's just not the best in this format when Miss continues to be at 1. So what are your thoughts if Miss came back to 3 this format? 
Next, we have Virtual World, where we honestly have not heard much from this deck in quite some time now. Not affected by Bestials at least, and doing pretty well with a 51% match win percentage, but certainly not topping any YCS events anytime soon. Next, we have a deck labeled as Red Eyes on YGS Scope, which I feel is probably Dragoon Turbo. What used to be a monster that everyone complained about since the ban of Anaconda really has not been an issue at all, and I'm guessing this is more so played in a control strategies only now, and when paired with certain traps or floodgates, it can actually be really difficult to out this strategy. Then we have another control deck in Altergeist which did not perform well lately with a 43% match win percentage. There's probably better traps decks out there right now such as Labyrinth or just anti-meta strategies and so Altergeist is not really at its peak rogue status as it once was. Next we have a surprise entry in Black Wings. They of course did get new support in Darkwing Blast, although that was quickly looked over and we never saw any Black Wings top YCS events since then, but still really cool to see a classic archetype see decent amount of play online on Dueling Book. I honestly don't know if their main strategy has changed since Darkwing Blast, but definitely let me know in the comments if you know more about the deck. Did not perform well though at just 41% match win percentage. Then we have Dogmatica Invoke, which despite getting the Deer Servant back to 3, really is not doing much this format. The Bestials really messed the Invoke part up, not to mention the Grave Shuffle will finally be able to interrupt the Invocation Return effect. Finally, in the C tier, we have True Draco, which actually someone went 6-3 on day 1 at YCS Dortmund with this deck, which is pretty wild in today's age. Another trap-heavy strategy that's focused on Floodgates to win, the deck unsurprisingly did not perform well online at a 43% match win percentage, and let's just hope Masterpiece never comes back anytime soon. Lastly, in the D tier, we start with Monarchs. Really is a worse version of True Draco arguably, although it does have better draw power now that Pantheism is at 3. It's a classic archetype that makes good use of the tribute summoning mechanic, and is definitely a very cheap and easy deck to play if you're just starting out with Yu-Gi-Oh. Lastly, it's sad to see that Drytrons rank this low, even below a deck like Monarchs. Obviously, Drytrons are better than decks like True Draco or Monarchs, but in this format with Bestials and Grave Shuffling, the deck is just in a really difficult spot right now and has just seen a complete drop in play online, not to mention a miserable win percentage at 38%. It just got Ben 10 back only to get screwed by the new set releases, but maybe it'll return back to its glory days someday. Alright guys, so that was it for this month's Rogue tier list. Hope that helped if you were looking to play a new Rogue strategy, although of course it's a dark time for Rogue decks right now. As always, a big thanks to my Patreons, Eileen Dice Queen, Bold Spider Cybernetic, Brandon Jaren, Bear Alert, Spooky Boogie, and Steven Phillips, and Chaz Blank, as always, for supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, link down below. Take care, guys.